All right, so we're going to be working with points of inflection. Write the equation of the line tangent. So stop right here. When you guys read, write the equation of a line. You think point slope. So thinking point slope, we're going to need we're going to need an x and a y coordinate and slope. Okay, so so far we don't have any of these. Typically, we're given an x to start with, but you can see that the language is at its point of inflection. So we're going to have to find the point of inflection to get x and y. And then we'll find the derivative of y and plug in the x-coordinate of that point of inflection. So I think we have our plan. Let's find its uh, point of inflection. So on our way to the second derivative. Now we're going to come back here in just a minute and we're going to evaluate the first derivative at whatever x value we find of the point of inflection. Okay, the second derivative exists everywhere, so we're going to set it equal to zero, factor out of six, or not. It's pretty basic, pretty easy. Okay, so we're looking at x equals negative one. So what that means is the second derivative, y, f, evaluated at negative 1, gives us 0. Okay. So we have the x-coordinate of our point of inflection, so I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. Okay. 0 is not the y-coordinate. I mean, it might be, but that's not what this is saying right here. All right, to find the y-coordinate of the point of inflection requires us to go back to the original equation and evaluate it at negative 1. So let's find the functional value at negative 1. All right, so negative 1 gives negative 1 plus 3 plus 2. So what's that, 5, 4? That's 4. Okay, so now we have our point of inflection. This is where the concavity is going to change. Um, I didn't need to do a second derivative number line test because it's telling me that, you know, there is a point of inflection, and because I only found one value at which the second derivative is 0, I don't have to, to test to make sure that um, the signs on either side of that, that, um, that number, that x value, changes. So by default, it has to be this is the point of inflection. All right, so we're missing slope to write the equation of the line. So let's go back to the first derivative. I'm just going to use f prime. And we're going to evaluate it at negative 1. So going back to f prime, plugging in negative 1. Uh, that's going to give 3 minus 6, so the result is negative 3. And finally, we can write the equation of the tangent line. So y plus 3, oh, y minus 4, here we go, y minus 4, picked up the wrong one, equals the slope negative 3 times x plus 1. All right, let's take a look at number two. Okay, so I'm just now noticing that on this uh, Word document, uh, problems two, three, and four aren't showing up. So, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you have them in your cliff notes, so I'm just going to go with it um, right now. I'm just going to uh, add number two right here where yours is. Find the x-coordinates of the points of inflection of, and it gives us a function. That actually gives us the derivative. All right, given this derivative, we're supposed to find the points of inflection of the function. Now, um, just thinking about how we could proceed from here, if we had a calculator, I'm typing this equation into y1. Okay, and I'm looking to see where the relative mins and maxes are on the derivative graph. Because the x values at which you have the relative mins and maxes are the x coordinates of the points of inflection on the f graph. I don't know that this question was designed to be a calculator one. If it was, that, that would be the way I would proceed. But let's also look at how we would proceed if this was a no calculator question. Okay, so for me to find the x coordinates of the points of inflection, I would actually have to find the second derivative. And um, this is going to be a good thing to revisit here. 
To find the second derivative requires the product rule, and there's also a chain rule in there. So this is your first factor, this is your second factor. All right, so let's find the second derivative. So it's going to be the first factor left alone. And I'll come back and find the derivative of the second factor. I'm just doing the setup right now. I know some of you guys are comfortable with just finding the derivative right here. That's fine. I'm just going to start it this way. Plus the second factor times the derivative of the first. All right, so working with this term right here, Okay, here's the chain rule on this um, factor. Let's bring the 2 in front. We'll drop the exponent to 1. Okay, so I won't show that. But don't forget we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. If you want to show the setup of that, fine. If you're comfortable with knowing that that next line would produce a, a 3 here as a factor, that's fine too. All right, over here now. All right, and the derivative here is just going to be 2. Okay, so at this point what we have to do is we have to set this equation equal to 0 and then set each factor equal to 0. Well, I have some factoring work to do. Okay, so when you look at this situation right here, look for a common factor. Let's completely factor this answer. Okay, um, perhaps I might want to do a little cleanup first. Uh, well, maybe I can factor and clean up at the same time. I'll try and take care of those two things. All right, it appears that both of these terms have a factor of 3x minus 2 and also a factor of 2. So I'm going to pull out the 2 and the 3x minus 2. And just so I don't get lost in the parentheses and all that there are, I'm going to go ahead and change to the grouping symbol, the bracket. All right, let's see, 2 will pull out here, and then 3x minus 2 pulls out, and I'm left with 3 times 2x minus 1. Moving across the plus sign, I'm going to take out the 2 and one of these factors, leaving just 1. All right, so how we proceed is we clean this up, and we'll have a completely factored second derivative to set equal to 0 to do our number line test. I'm going to change back to the grouping symbol, the parentheses. So this is what, 6x minus 3 plus 3x minus 2. So 9x minus 5. All right, set each factor equal to 0. And when we do that, we're going to get x equals 2 thirds and x equals 5 ninths. All right, so these are the two x values at which our second derivative is 0. It asks us to find the x coordinates, so that's all I need to do. I don't need to plug these two values back into the original um, function, which, which I don't have anyway, uh, to find the y coordinates. Okay, so now we just have to make sure that there's a change of concavity, so we're going to do our double derivative number line. Okay, this one's a little tricky because these two values are very close to each other. Um, actually, 5 ninths is going to be smaller than 2 thirds. Okay, these are our two zeros for our second derivative. Okay. It's not too difficult to test to the left of 5 ninths because you can choose 0 to plug in and you're going to get positive. And it's not too difficult to test to the right of 2 thirds because you can plug like 1 in and get positive. It's just kind of challenging to find the value between 5 ninths and 2 thirds, which is like 0.6, 6 tenths, 3 fifths. That's kind of difficult, but um, it did produce a negative. Okay, so for us to kind of finish and conclude an answer from this work, okay, where are the x coordinates of the points of inflection? Well, we do have a concavity change okay, on both of these values here. So both of these x values would be points of x coordinates of points of inflection. That was a little tedious just because of these fractions right here. But this was a good one to look at and review the product rule with the chain rule and uh, how to put your answer in a completely factored form.
All right, let's take a look at my um, hidden number three, my fake number three. All right, how many inflection points must the function f of x have if, if that second derivative is equal to that um, expression there? So let's get that down. Okay, oftentimes students will look at the second derivative and they'll realize that when you set it equal to zero, you, you get three x values at which that occurs, and that's true. And then they automatically think that those three x values would be your points of, your x coordinates of your points of inflection. Okay. Uh, but that's not necessarily true. Okay, so from this, we know the second derivative will be zero when x is zero, or from this factor, the second derivative, when I plug in 4, will be 0, or x is negative 2, also gives a second derivative of 0. And then they say this, this is the answer, and they're done. Okay. But we have to continue and follow through and check to make sure there is a concavity change. Okay. But pay attention to the even exponents. Funny things happen with even exponents there. So what, negative 2, 0, and 4. All right, plug in a test value to the left of negative 2. Let's try negative 3. Well, this factor is always going to be positive. This factor will always be positive. When you plug in negative 3 here, you're going to take a negative 7 and cube it, which gives a negative to be multiplied by a positive. You end up getting negative here. All right, plug in negative 1, which falls nicely between negative 2 and 0. Plug in negative 1. Again, this is positive. This will always be positive. When you plug in negative 1, the result is a negative number. That product is also negative. All right, plug in, say, 2. 2 now. Well, again, this is always positive. This is positive. When you plug in 2, again, the result is a negative number. Okay, it's not until you plug in a number that's greater than 4 that this middle factor becomes positive, which means the whole product will be positive. So, in fact, what we have is just one inflection point. Okay, so it's always uh, important to go back and do your double derivative number line test. All right, so we'll take a look at number four. All right, forgive my crudely drawn graph, but this is a graph of the second derivative. All right, so it tells us this is the second derivative. What are the x-coordinates of the inflection points of g of x? All right, well, if this is the second derivative to g, okay, then we're just looking for where this graph, g double prime, changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, and the only location is going to be right here. And from the graph that you have in your clip notes, you can see that g is going to have a point of inflection at x equals negative 1. And it's acceptable to abbreviate. Okay. And looking at this x-intercept of positive 2, okay, the concavity doesn't change because we have a positive and then a 0 and then a positive. So there's no change in concavity. All right, so that's a review of points of inflection. So in the next video, we'll do note card number 26.